camera gets away well and takes an early lead from Bradford. They hit well over 100 miles per hour in the straight. My name is Roger Carey and I'm the chairman of the Aston Martin Heritage Trust. I've been a member of the Aston Martin Owners Club for 33 years now and became a trustee in 2007 and chairman in 2010. The Heritage Trust is a public educational charity and was founded in 1998 by the Aston Martin Owners Club to provide a secure legal framework in which the wonderful heritage collection that the club had assembled since its inception in the 30s could be housed. The primary function of the trust was to, to care for those assets that were transferred by the club and develop them uh, to provide a really world-class collection of Aston Martin since the company was formed in 1913. The collection's housed here at the barn in Drayton St. Leonard and displayed in a number of different ways with the automotive collection, the display cabinets which house uh, different um, automotive artefacts but we also have a superb collection of models showing everything that Aston Martin's produced uh, since it was formed and then we have the archive which is on the first floor here which contains all of the uh, paper records of the company maintained, enhanced and developed by our curator Donna Bannister. The collections encompass everything held within the barn, including our photograph collection, engineering drawings, we have David Brown's desk and boardroom table, we have several items that belong to Sterling Moss, overalls, a helmet, a checkered flag from the RACTT that he won. Most of the items that we have we rely on being donated to us, but occasionally we will purchase historically significant items when they become available. A3, the oldest existing Aston, was purchased by the Trust and has been restored and is now takes pride of place in our museum. We use all the records we have on every car that has been made right from beginning from A3, the first car, which was here in, in our museum through to the latest ones. But we're now in the process of developing an online register to take full advantage of modern technology which makes the whole production far more flexible and enables an up-to-the-minute record to always be available to all those with an interest in Aston Martin. I think the collections are, are hugely important to, to everyone. They form the basis of what we do. We use them for displays in the museum. They're designed for encouraging people to interact with the living history that Aston Martin has created and it's our job to ensure that that remains for future generations to enjoy. I'm Kingsley Ridingfels, Managing Director of Aston Martin Works at Newport Pagnell, um, Director of Aston Martin Lagonda and I have the privilege to be a trustee of the Aston Martin Heritage Trust. I think the relationship between Aston Martin Lagonda and the Heritage Trust is very important. Um, over a lot of years it's been proven how helpful the Trust is to the company. It is the official archive for Aston Martin Lagonda Limited and a company with that, like ours that's had a hundred years of really interesting history it's a little bit like a person who has so much character. Um, the more you get to know them, the more you like them. And with Aston Martin, there's been so much character and so much diversity over the years. It's marvellous that the, all of this is now being recorded and kept for posterity and be able to be used for reference. But certainly the Trust provides a fantastic library of information, both for the factory itself to reuse and also for owners all around the world. I think the greatest thing about preserving the heritage, it's so important because even everything that we did last week will become history at some point. And 
to have a wonderful history like Aston Martin's had in the last hundred years, the tremendous contribution that people have made, both by owning the company, by working in the company, by the trustees of the Aston Martin Heritage Trust, who've all played their part over the years, the benefactors that have made things possible, like the restoration of A3, the start of the um, archive, and these sort of things, as so many people have made and played so much over the years. And if anything, the trust preserving all of this and maintaining it as we go forward gives those people some form of recognition. And it's lovely for people to be able to go back and see things from years past and so on. It is so important. And it also provides the platform for the future that, you know, if someone wants to bequeath something to the trust, they know they're placing it in safe and professional hands where it'll be looked after and dealt with appropriately. The trust is in the long game and we expect to be producing this magazine indefinitely and so over time we will provide a unique record of a unique brand through this annual production. The trust also encourages the loan of the Trust Ulster by members for approved events. Due to the age and value of the car there are some strict conditions of use but a lot of members take and enjoy the opportunity. In 2013, we took part at the centenary celebrations at Kensington Palace, which was a great example for meeting a variety of members and supporters of the Trust, while everybody had a great time around the backdrop of Aston Martins. The Dudley Corum Memorial Lecture is held yearly in October at the Barn and is usually on a historical or technical subject concerning Aston Martins. We had probably more than 100,000 different items that have been uh, gifted or acquired over the period and everything in the collection is housed here in the barn at Drayton St. Leonard. It's not just the benefaction that's uh, critical to the growth of the trust but of course the continuing support of the members of the Owners Club. Uh, part of annual subscriptions, Owners Club subscriptions pass through to the trust to enable us to administer everything that we do here in our museum. My name is Brian Jocelyn and the story of this rather bent steering wheel off a racing car uh, goes back to 1973 at the Le Mans 24 hours but it wasn't the 24 hours race that I was in it was a support race really for the entertainment of the crowd uh, to show how the cars used to be and how they used to race. I was well over 100 miles an hour, um, braking and changing down into fourth gear to take this Porsche curve. The gear lever failed to catch the fourth gear as I was changing down, and so the car drifted out to the left and wallop straight into catch fencing. And of course, my body, having no, no seat belts fit in at all, went straight into the uh, steering wheel like that and um, this is how it got bent. Had a few bruises for the weekend. Uh, about a month later, the car had been repaired by the very skilled body mechanics at uh, Newport Pagnell, the factory at Newport Pagnell. Charles Warden, who was the managing director then of Aston Martin, produced this bent steering wheel to present back to me as a memento. Of course, it had a new one fitted. And on the hub here was a part of a cigarette packet on which the mechanics had written, don't do it again. <laughs> and that's the story of this steering wheel. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but one thing for sure is that we'll be keeping a close relationship with the club and the company who produce the new cars to make sure that we record all of this advancing, growing heritage every step of the way. We don't just see our members as visitors to the museum, but as part of the legacy built by Aston Martin and the Trust, 
and they're helping to build it even further. I am immensely proud and lucky to be working with the Aston Martin Heritage Trust and it's incredibly rewarding to, to come to work and be responsible for improving and growing the collections and the displays in the museum. I think we're extremely lucky as a company to be able to have the privilege to work with the Trust and very much so the Aston Martin Owners Club as well. We've got a great history to protect, we've got a great opportunity to educate and we've got a great opportunity to play an active part in the growth and development of this heritage in the future. It's coming along extremely well and, and we're very pleased that we have visitors from all over the world to come to see it. We're very proud of it.